Welcome back to these master classes training about Reactor. This is the second video in a series. So I don't want to introduce everything, but we have just created a variable, assigned it to a button. And now I want to make that variable do something useful. We have um, talked about this variable being like a menu selector. And from the previous video, we got to this point where as we are pressing that button in the simulated environment, the variable is, is rotating its values. A uh, little bonus info is if you press the sides of this button, then that, since this is a four-way button, it goes like left and right, but it stops at the endpoints. So that is also how an encoder would work. Actually, we ah, let's just try this real quick here. Let's get out of this environment. We are on the layer training config. We'll click this one. We'll just create a behavior. We'll add the variable that we had just a moment ago like that. And we have step change. So guess what? I now have on this encoder, I can do the same. You see, I'm 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 turning the encoder the, the one and the other way in the simulator here, and the value is changing. It's the same value as this one down here. So that's just a quick thing. Uh, I'll just let me see, get out of simulation mode and then right click and delete this behavior so that we can continue. So in this one, layers only, we will be talking about how can we uh, see the ref reflection of the, the purpose of this variable. Now, most of the time when you have a menu, what you really want to do with that menu is to navigate through some pages of parameters that you can change. So what I want to do is to create a number of layers over here. So I right click on the training config layer. I will create a child layer. We'll call this vmix stuff. We'll just press submit. And now you can see that we added this layer up here. If I if I click on this layer and then I, uh, I I now hold down shift and I drag across these, I dragged across the four encoders on the PDC fly, I now get a chance to create four behaviors right there. Okay, so I did so and now you can see that we have something, some behavior inside of these apparently. It's called dummy behavior and that's because it's just to quickly give you something in the displays that shows that, okay, what I did mattered somehow. And uh, that, that's what we did here. Now I want to, to make another two layers because the values of the variable that we will use to change between the visibility of those layers is called VMAX presets and camera select. So um, I'm not going to add actual content. That's for far later in this training series, but I still want you to, to have some kind of idea about the destination of what I'm teaching you. So this is why I do this. So what I'll do now is to create another two layers here. Let me see, we can create a layer above. We name it presets. We will create another layer. Oh, below, I'm sorry about that. And we call that camera selects. If you want to change the order of these, which won't matter in this case, you can right click and then you can move layer up and then you can change the order of things. Now, we do exactly the same as we did just before, real quick here. Just mark these. Um, see, select the layer here. I will hold down shift, mark across these. I'll do this again. Hold shift down. Create behaviors. And there we have now new behaviors on this one. I'll pick this one, mark these layers, right click, create behaviors, and create for these. The point of creating these layers is to associate them with the menu variable. So only one of the layers is visible at a time, depending on which value the menu variable has. Let's just revisit the menu variable. It's this guy down here. And if I go to simulation mode and I click this button, we see it is rotating the values. You can see the values there, follow the values over there. And what I want now is us to remember these values because unfortunately we don't have a fully automized way to pick that value up just yet. So where we are right now, we need to remember the value vmix, presets and cam select, okay? So, but from this point on, it's gonna be pretty easy. If I go up here, camera select, I can associate the visibility of this layer with a condition. We call it an active if condition. The layer is active if the condition is true. Now, it is currently active. That is indicated by the blue line you see to the left of the layer. But if I go to the active if condition, if I actually add some content to it, and uh, that would be f um, picking the, the variable menu, like here, and then associating it with a value, a literal value, 
and it should not be vmix, it should be cam cell, because that's the value that was associated with camera select. Submit, and now you can see that condition is associated with the layer. Actually, cam select is the value that the variable has right now, so this is why it's, it's shown. But hey, what if we went over here, click this one, and you see now where the value of the variable is vmix, this layer has been deactivated. So we'll just quickly do this for the two other layers. So the vmix layer here, active if condition, let's edit that one. We have the variable menu is equal to, and we'll just click this once and change it to vmix. Submit, submit, and down here, do the same, add, add the active if condition, and we can change this value to presets. I can't remember if, if it was the one or the other, let's just check. Whew, presets, it was correct. Now we are ready to check if the layer visibility is actually associated with this. You can see, yes, notice the blue line. As I'm pressing this, they are visible in turn, okay? You can also see content is changing for the encoders because the demo content that was placed on these, you know, we haven't cared about them, we won't care about those, um, those behaviors that has been created for the layers. We can just see that something is changing here. Now, before we move on, because this is all about how to work with the behaviors and the variables and feedback and so on. So, I want to associate different colors. So there's a little bonus tip here, and that is for layer, you can define a default behavior actually. And a nice thing would be to just pick a custom color for each of these. So I'll pick a um, rose color for one of the layers, the preset layer. Then for the vmix layer, I would pick a, a um, purple color. And then for this layer, I will pick a greenish color of some sort. Let's pick the mint color here. Now notice that the background of the encoders will pick this up as their default color. So you can you can overwrite that in the behaviors, you will see that later. But what happens is as I'm now changing here, you can see that the default color that is or the yeah, the default color for the layer is also clearly visible. So now I've established a context for you to understand the menu variable in that the menu variable is actually affecting something in the system, namely what these encoders, which behaviors are available on those. And that's a, a fundamental principle in what you can do inside of Reactor with layers.